Welcome everybody to NetApp On Air, the show you need to be watching for all things NetApp. My name is Nick Howell. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're excited to have this continued coverage of ONTAP 914. I hope you guys saw the show uh, two weeks ago with Keith Ason, our Senior Product Manager for ONTAP going over the whole payload of what is to come with the next iteration, the next major release of ONTAP 914. Uh, we're going to continue that today with a going a little bit technical, a little bit deeper into the weeds with a special topic, something that's new to ONTAP, uh, and we'll go over that in detail with our good friend, Mr. Scott Bell, uh, who will be on. But first, make sure you get into the Discord community. Uh, NetAppDiscord.com is the place to go for that. Uh, just click the Join button, sign up, and let us know, uh, fill out the onboarding survey, and you will be part of our awesome community here at NetApp. Thousands of members in there. You've got access to technical staff. Uh, so our executives hang out in there, so feedback is always welcome. And we've got much, much more coming in 2024 that we can't wait to share with you guys in Discord. Uh, we're absolutely going to be ramping this show up in a big way, so make sure you subscribe to YouTube. Follow us on Twitch. Uh, come follow me on TikTok. There's all kinds of places for you to get uh, access to all kinds of content and for you guys to follow along with us here as we bring more and more content to you here on at NetApp. Uh, we got a lot to talk about today, so I don't want to waste too much more time of me just rambling, so I want to get right into it. Let's bring up our old friend, uh, Mr. Scott Bell. Scott, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I got to change that background because I messed up there. Uh, let's do that. There we go. That's better. Nice. <laughs> Nobody All needs right. to see Thanks two of Nick, back, right? Nick. Hey, it looks great. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Scott, we recently had Keith on to go over ONTAP 914, as you're aware, and one of the big things about it, was, it's, first of all, it's a massive payload. There's a lot of stuff to talk about, and I think we didn't get a chance to cover what we're going to talk about today, which uh, you're, you told me was auto-partitioning spares. Uh, right. So I'm definitely I'm anxious to get into that because we've had you on here talking about um, ADP before with our dynamic provisioning, um, or partitioning, excuse me and the all, all of that stuff so i definitely want to hear what is sort of the next steps around that so how do we kick off this conversation well this is the um how should i say this is the the missing link this is the key to what a lot of you that subscribe to this channel and thank you for subscribing making this channel con continued success this is the key where the most common questions i get hey i just I have my system initialized, but I want to continue using ADP on a new shelf that I just attached, and I can't spend the time reinitializing the system. There were tricks and tips that I gave you along the way, especially if you tune into the, the, the recording of the former broadcast, but this will make your life a little bit easier, and I'm going to go into that in just another minute or two. Nice. So uh, do you have some favorite parts uh, in ONTAP 914 aside from this? Are there some things that you sort of call out that may be directly related to some of the things that you work on when it comes to directly interfacing with some of our systems? You know, it's funny you say that. Uh, honestly, this is my favorite part of it, not because uh, the payload is, uh, is so extensive that I just can't pick one, but I'm one of the few people that you will meet in this company that plays around with sheet metal more than I do software. So yeah. if there is a new favorite feature that I don't know about, it's just I don't know about it yet. And yep. I don't regularly interface with it like Keith does. Right. And I think he might say the same thing about the, the hardware side of it with, <laughs> with respects to, uh, to what you guys do. But I think you guys make, uh, you, got, you guys' respective teams make awesome combos when it comes to doing the hardware and the software side of it. So, yeah, let's dive in. Let's, let's get into what uh, your favorite feature of ONTAP 914. Sure, bud. Pull this Thank up you here so real much. Quick. There you go. All right. We good? We're good. All right. So um, for those of you who haven't met me yet or haven't tuned in one of the broadcasts yet, uh, my name is Scott Bell. I'm a senior technical product manager here at NetApp for AFF, FAS, and ASA systems. Uh, I first joined NetApp in 2008, spent a couple years in the, uh, in the support center, some in sales, some in prod ops. 2001, I got poached away by a competitor, but in 2002, I boomeranged back, much like Nick did. And uh, here I am back on the product operations team. But nice. that's boring. You don't want to hear about me and all, all that. Let's just dive right in. You've been doing this for a minute. It, it, it's been a, a little while. Yeah. <laughs> so 
for those of you who are unable to attend the original on-air episode where we discussed ADP at length, Nick uh, already referred to that. This is a quick overview of methods used. If you'd like to know more, then just tune in to the previously available live broadcast. I know it's available on YouTube. Nick can give you some uh, additional links as well. But in the end, there are two different methods that are used by advanced drive partitioning. Root data data, or RD2, and root data, RD. So let's start with RD2 because that's what's used with SSDs. Okay? Hmm. It is applied by default on all AFF systems initialized with ONTAP 9.0 or later. You'll notice I don't specifically call out ASA. ASA can't exist without AFF, so it will leverage that as well. Don't worry. The root aggregates are provisioned across a maximum of 48 SSDs per, H, uh, per HA pair. Okay. That doesn't mean you can't exceed that. It's just when ONTAP is initializing the system, it stops at 48, okay? And whole drives, those that are unpartitioned, should you add them into a RAID group that is made up of partitions, will automatically slice and dice the drives. Remember what I was talking about earlier? There were some workarounds. This is one of those workarounds. Yeah. And we also include fast systems, but only fast systems that use all SSDs. If you have spinners, you won't get it. Right. Now, for those fast systems, we do have RD partitioning. This is applied by default for all FAS systems, uh, and the uh, it's optional on mid and high range systems that run on tap 9.2 or later. Hopefully, we've all exceeded that revision, but if you are, you have it act, uh, available to you. Root aggregates on spinners are provisioned across a maximum of 24. Why? Well, that's it. That's not to say that you can have a maximum of 24 drives. That's just saying that it's the root aggregates are provisioned across 24 drives. Correct. And just like uh, RD2 on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, it's the exact same thing. doesn't mean you can't exceed 24. It's just the root will only be laid down across a maximum of 24 when the system's initialized. Got it. And much like SSDs, if you want to add a whole drive into a RAID group that's already con co composed of partitions, it'll automatically slice and dice it for you. Now, me personally, I'm a visual kind of guy. I like pretty pictures because they help illustrate concepts that are simple. Now, with regards to RD2 partitioning on the right or RD partitioning on the left, this is a rough idea of what it actually looks like. Uh, the, especially with spinners, you see that the root partition is closer to the center and the data partition is closer to the outer edge. Why? Outer edge spins faster. Whereas SSDs, well, they're SSDs. They're going to be yeah. lightning fast no matter what. Okay, so that's where that is. Let's actually talk about what's exciting with 914, the auto partition spares behavior. Check this Hey, before we out. get into auto partition, we had a question come up about ADPs. Let's cover this before we get into this one. Uh, has there been a change in the maximum number of drives that can use ADP partitions? A maximum number of drives. No, uh, the maximums are still there. 24 uh, for HDD-based systems, 48 for SSD-based systems. But like I said, that is only during system initialization. If you want to exceed that, you can. And I'm going to show you how right here with 914. Nice. There you go, Darth. Okay, so let's talk about it. 914 introduces the auto partition spares policy. But what does that exactly mean? Well, ONTAP is going to automatically partition any spare drives without intervention with some conditions. It is supported for use on all AFF and FAS systems. It is not supported on, excuse me, AFF and ASA system is not supported on FAS systems or Metro cluster systems just by virtue of how they are. And if you want additional information, you have access to the NetApp field portal. There is a, a lot of yummy goodness inside the ADP technical FAQ that can help you out and some command lines along the way. Nice. Be aware, should you initialize a new system right now or upgrade from 913 or wherever you are, this is disabled by default. So if you want to enable it, 
you have to turn it on on both nodes of the HA pair. You can't just do it on one side and not on the other. Both nodes must have it. But the good news is you don't have to reinitialize to use this new behavior, which is really cool. Nice. Here's another one of the conditions. All the data aggregates configured in the HA pair must be composed exclusively of partitions. So if you have an aggregate or RAID group that has a whole or unpartitioned drives, I don't care if you have the policy enabled, it's going to ignore it. It's like not doing it. Mm. But if you do have it enabled and you do have all your aggregates and RAID groups composed of nothing but partitions, then it's going to slice and dice those regardless of the raw capacity of the drive. Think about that. Regardless of raw capacity, I have a shelf of 960s, but I need to grow that much more. Maybe I buy a shelf of 3.8s or two shelves of 3.8s or one of 3.8s and one point, uh, 7.6s. Doesn't matter. It's going to do it. Why? Because the root partition is the factor that says, how much do I cut off the top before I evenly divide the remaining space? So I like so a couple of comments real quick. I like that it's disabled by default. Um, I I think that could catch a lot of people off guard if that was on enabled by default. Exactly why we did um, it that way. So kudos for that one. Um, the other thing I'm thinking of is like you said that it didn't need, we didn't need a system reinitialization to take advantage of this or to, to enable it and turn it on. In the instance that someone has followed some of our guidance in the past and leveraged whole disks and uh, expanded using ADP that way. It is. Does that require a, a reinitialization, or do we just do we? How how do we deal with the situation where someone wants to do this, but they have provisioned whole disks in the past? So it's funny you say that. I got that covered in the slides. Can I let them speak for themselves? <laughs> please do. Please do. All right. Very good. Let's move on. So, here's a very common configuration, especially for those of you who may have bought the AFF or ASAC series that has uh, only eight drives in it. Why? Well, those are 15 terabyte drives. They're pretty big and you may not have needed 12, but maybe you find out that you do for whatever reason. In this case, an 8 SSD configuration, the P3 partitions themselves are 93 gigs each. And those 93 gigs compose the root on both sides. You see them listed up at the top. Now, I want to expand by two drives. When I plug in two drives, because we want to go from the outside in, I want to plug into bays 4 and 19 in this illustration. Your mileage may vary, but those slot numbers will be the same. Drive auto assignment is going to take over and say, OK, bay 4 belongs to one node. Bay 19 belongs to another node. Pretty simple so far, yeah? Yeah. But my data aggregate, as you can tell, is composed entirely of partitions. So with the policy enabled, Slice and dice, I get two root spare partitions of 93 gigs each, and the remaining capacity is divided into P1s and P2s without any intervention or interaction from you. Hmm. Now, those drive capacities, you notice down in the lower left-hand corner, I, I have this on a lot of slides. This is a conceptual illustration. The SSD raw capacities do not have to match. Okay. However... If you are in a situation right now where you have, say, those are 3.8s in the system and you plug in two 7.6s, that will work. It will work. But as soon as you add that 7.6 partition into that existing ray group, it will get downsized to match because it has it can't account for more data space than, than the ray group already has in the partitioning scheme. Got it. Okay. So you will actually lose space if you do that in this configuration. But don't fret. I got more examples for you. Now, here's where ideally I like people to be when they're uh, configuring, first buying a system and setting it up. 12 drives with SSDs. Not always possible. I'm not insensitive to that. But this is ideal. Here you have the P3 partitions are 62 gigs. And we can see that we have a couple parity, a couple roots spare on each side on tap life is good but i want to expand that by 12 drives okay if i do that i populate all the middle base pretty self-explanatory drive auto assignment kicks in 
6 to 11 on one side, 12 to 17 on another side. Here's where if you had, say, uh, 960s on the outsides and on the insides, you just plugged in a 3.8s, this is going to be okay because you're going to be able to create new RAID groups of those larger capacities without sacrificing any of the space. So since my data aggregates are composed of partitions, new SSDs are going to create uh, 12 new 62 gig spare root partitions and then slice and dice the remaining space. So those middle drives could be partitions on 3.8, no big deal. Create another aggregate, create another RAID group, fair game. Pretty slick. Yeah, I like it. I, I, like I, it I haven't lot. typed in a command yet. Not at all. Yep. You enable the storage policy and that's it. And that command is listed inside that ADP tech fact. So I'm not going to show that on this screen right here, but if you have access to the field portal, download the tech fact, it's in there. All right, now, here's a more common scenario. We got somebody with 24 drives and they want to add a half shelf. Why? Well, I don't need a full shelf. So let's see what happens. In this configuration, my P3s are 23 gig. And I attach a new half shelf. Okay, drive auto assignment is going to kick in zero to five on one side, 18 to 23 on the other side. Since my RAID group is composed entirely of partitions, guess what? All 12 of those create new 12, uh, excuse me, 23 gig spare partitions. And then P1s and P2s are all created without any intervention or interaction from you, aside from plugging the shelf in. Yeah, I was going to say, like, what, what's the storage admin's job at this point? Plug it in. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. Obviously, there's right. plenty to do, but let, like, let I, I love that Plug we're taking the correctly. overhead of stand-up away quite a bit uh, just from or, or minimizing it to, to a certain yes. extent. Yes, we're not really taking it away. We're minimizing it and providing additional benefits along the way, provided that it's all plugged in correctly. Yeah. That's what I want to revise. Plug it in correctly and you're good to go. Yeah, this is beautiful. Awesome. Am I moving too quickly? Do we need to? No, I, I think, uh, well, we, we had a couple of questions come up um, when, uh, when there's a good stopping point. Okay. So what if I take that nice, shiny 24 SSD configuration that I already have? I want to attach a full shelf. Well, lather, rinse, repeat. We attach a new shelf. Auto assignment's going to kick in. Half on one side, half to the other. And again, because we're composed entirely of partitions, no interaction whatsoever. It's just going to handle it. I Damn. like this very much. Yeah, me too. But there's some, uh, there's some uh, uh, caveats that I'm about to show you here. Let's dive right into it. Well, before we get into those, let's, let's do some questions real quick because I, I don't right. want to get too far gone from, from where the, uh, the questions were. I'm going to pull that off screen real quick. Sure. Uh, Sebastian had a question here. Uh, you mentioned that... Um, that there was no auto provisioning on Metro cluster. So fiber channel gets because the auto bridges don't do the partitions, but Correct. since MCC IP does support ADP, why no auto provisioning? Look for it in the future. Not at this time. Watch that space. Watch this space. Uh, there was also a question in discord that I can't pull up on the screen here. So I'll just read it from, uh, from OG one. Okay. He says, so that means ONTAP will partition the new disks before you add them to an existing aggregate? Yes. So APS helps with getting partitioned spares, basically. It helps getting it, getting the media partitioned before you get to use it. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, OG1, I know for a fact, was on the, the, was a guest member in one of the, in the ADP previous broadcast. And I showed some tricks along the way where you can add a whole drive into, you know, partition ray group and, and get more and automatically slice and dice. That's still fair game. This eliminates that step. It lets ONTAP do the lifting for you. So you don't have to. There you go. All right. Caveats. All right. Caveats. Here's the fun one. Say I got a 24 drive system. I expanded it say last year uh, with a full shelf, but my second RAID group or aggregates, these could be standalone aggregates as well, are composed of whole drives. Okay, what happens here? Well, I got 24 uh, P3 partitions, 23 gigs each. I got a second shelf of unpartitioned drives sitting out there. Now I attach a new shelf. 
what happens? Well, drive auto assignment does the heavy lifting for me. But because in this case, I have second RAID groups that are composed entirely of whole, droid, uh, whole drives, policy is ignored. It doesn't mm. do anything. It, it will leave that shelf completely unpartitioned. Okay. Hmm. So that's so I'm trying to think to do... through that. So when I made the decision, do when I was first initializing the system mm -hmm. to partition it and then add a shelf of whole drives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So if this is adding a, sh so we, there's no data on these. They're just partitioned at, or they're set up as whole drives. They're not partitioned. So there's not a way that we, why, what would be the reason why we wouldn't want to automatically partition those? Help me understand that logic. Well, um, that was the prescribed method for many years. You know, if you need to expand, create another RAID group of whole drives. Right. However, that didn't always meet the customer needs because of the sheer fact it's like, well, I bought a half shelf. I want to put half on this side, half on the other. You shouldn't have done that if you did because of the sheer fact that you may have created a hot RAID group and actually degraded your performance. Obviously, it's not a catch-all. It's not one size fits all. Your mileage may vary and batteries are definitely not included. However, in this case, I have an example of one that has RAID group one in each aggregate of whole drives. And in that case, you can't remove a drive from an aggregate. You can't. If you want to do that, you got to crush the aggregate. Hmm. You got to destroy it all together. Okay. That's been that way since long before I joined NetApp. It's just the way that it is. And in this case, because it says, hey, I have 24 new spares, I'm not going to touch them. A primary reason for that is also that, remember from the ADP broadcast, a whole spare SSD can replace a whole unpartitioned SSD, or it can replace a partitioned SSD. And it's very versatile. It can, it can replace... Like over here in uh, RAID 1, this, uh, this drive right here, say Bay 11. This spare right here could replace any of these, or it could replace any of these up here. Should one fail, it will automatically take care of this spare. So if we had the policy turned on and we didn't have it ignore it in this condition, then not only would all of these become, but so would these, and then you'd have a spares low problem because you don't have a whole unpartitioned drive to replace one in case it fails. Gotcha. Okay. So there's always got to be, if you have whole drives, there has to be the spares whole drives as well. You can't automatically partition. A, I, now it clicked. I got it. Okay. Yeah. You always want to maintain the old rule for ONTAP is you always want to maintain one spare drive per type and ideally yeah. per capacity. Right. Okay. Now, where do we go from here? Well, let's say we have this. Maybe you have a nice shiny uh, AFF A800, which is really cool. Or you have an A900 that has 48 drives. Whatever the case may be. You got 48 drives. You did it right. Really right, I should say. And you have 48 uh, root partitions that are 9 gigs. So they're as tiny as they can be. So you maximize the amount of data space in your P1 and P2 data partitions. As you can see, we have... 47 drives and we got a, a lone spare sitting off to the side. Now, what happens? I attach a new shelf, drive auto assignment kicks back in. We've been doing this for a while, should expect that. However, since everything's made up of partitions, slice and dice, 24 new, nine spare root partitions created and the P1s and the P2s all get created without any interaction from you. Mm. So from an exp so okay, once this happened, it, it's partitioned. How does expansion take place? Is that do you is that still manual? Do you still have to go in and sort of do that yourself? Like how of do course. I increase the size of those things? It's that's still automatic. Yes. Uh, well, so well, in, that's in not automatic. Case, it's not so much automatic, but it makes things easier, especially if you do things like I do from the command line. You know, it's, I'm just so used to the command line. That's all that I use. So. I say, hey, uh, ONTAP, I want to add 24 more partitions or 24 
raid group members, if you will, into my existing aggregates. Okay, no problem. What's it going to do? It's going to take ideally this one and these 23 and create raid group two into that same aggregate if that's what I want to do. Maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe uh, these internal drives here are um, nine, 960 gig drives, but down here I need a, a massive data warehouse er area, and these are 15s down here. You probably don't want to create a new RAID group. You probably want to create a separate aggregate. It's totally up to you. This is no different than if you plugged in a, a, a fresh set of drives and said, okay, now I want to do something with them. Yeah. So, and it, so if you're expanding the existing aggregate and just adding a new RAID group, does that does that provision 24 more uh, nine gig root partitions? Or since you're putting it in the same aggregate, those already exist. That's already taken care of. These will remain static. These yep. spare root partitions will just sit out there in your spares, and you can't use those to provision data aggregates. Right. As you, you said know. before earlier, the maximum is 24. Right. The, on on uh, fast on your root systems, partitions, maximum is 24 on HDD based systems, 48 on SSD based systems. However, gotcha. this new auto partition spares behavior is only available on SSDs, AFF and ASA systems. Gotcha. Okay. So no matter how many shelves of, of disks that I put on it, the maximum I will ever have per aggregate is 48 uh, root partitions that are actively used. Yes, absolutely. Gotcha. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Now, as I said before, this could be 960s up here. This could be 3.8s here. This could be 7.6s down here. All bets are off. Fair game. It will go ahead and slice and dice based on the value used by these. These are essentially the uh, the template or the, the cheat sheet, if you will, that says, okay, how much do I need to lop off the top before I can create some data spaces out of it. And that's how it does it. Gotcha. And we actually uh, uh, introduced this behavior with ONTAP 9.6 with the storage disk create partition command that is available in the, uh, in, in the cluster shell. However, the caveat of that command is you have to use it on an SSD that is the same size. So if I have a 960s, I want to use it on 3.8s, that won't work. But a 960 to 960 or 3.8 to 3.8, that will work. Gotcha. So it, it, what, what is the Scott Bell best practice what, when, you, when you're dealing with different drive sizes, when you're dealing with different, uh, you know, v different variations? Because I don't know that anybody's ever going to have the perfect system where it's all the, unless it's brand new, where it's all right. the same drive sizes. It's all like over the course of three to five years, you're going to expand a system over and over multiple times with different drive sizes, different speeds, different, you get it, right? Absolutely. What is the best way to sort of set yourself up for success with this in mind? Um, and I kind of want to refer people back to the ADP session we did earlier this year, because <laughs> I think we covered that, but it's just a, like a refresher to tie into auto partitioning here. Um, what is uh, your sort of guidance when it comes to this, when you're expanding systems? So net new systems, obviously you hit the nail on the head. You're going to set it up fresh and it's going to, ADP is going to do its trick for, uh, the first 48 SSDs. If you have an AFF or an ASA system. So I'm not worried about that there. Should you want to continue using partitioning and many in the audience today do and have asked me the same question in the past. However, some people don't want to that's fine that's why the policy is disabled by default however as with any aggregate creation this is one of those things that you know i just had an ebc yesterday when somebody was asking well how often would you do this it's like you would you would set it up once and you would leave it alone until you're ready to do something ideally you would never have to touch your aggregates again however space uh data space is finite and if i can parody a uh a movie quote from the uh, 80s uh, if you give users drive space they will fill it mm -hmm. and that's just a, a fact of it so in this case consider what you want to do maybe it makes more sense for you to have a uh, a, a larger capacity aggregate that's isolated from your primary workload maybe maybe they're just long-term uh, uh, 
may have different long-term purposes for you. But above and beyond all, the uh, before you do anything to your aggregate, whether it's creation or modify or anything of that sort, dash simulate true is your best friend because mm. it's going to actually show you what it's going to do. And then when you're ready to come in, say, that is exactly what I do. Eliminate the simulate true command, and then you're fine. So thank you for that. Um, I, I've never played with the, the simulate before. I want to I want to try that now. <laughs> um, I wanted to give you a chance to um, address one of the old the oldest questions in the book: uh, wasted root yep. partition root space. Um, yep. I know I dealt with that. 15 years yep. ago in seven mode we've talked about doing active passive just to maximize the usable capacity and all of that stuff but sure. this comes up all the time and i want to make sure that we sort of address it so when you're talking about the number of root partitions that this is going to generate how do we deal with the the anxiety of wasted space well that's a very fair question and with regards to um with regards to smaller systems, and when I say smaller, I'm talking about smaller amounts of drive quantities. You buy an eight drive configuration, you buy a 10 drive configuration, whatever. Remember, when the system's initialized, ONTAP's gonna use what it can to lay down a root file system. So the less drives you get it, the more it has to account for it on a per disk basis. You'll see back at the, um, at the very front where I had an eight drive configuration, root partitions were 93 gigs yeah but when you get to a 48 drive configuration regardless of the ssd capacity size or they could be 96 they could be 15.3s for all on tap cares when you have a quantity of 48 now it's down to nine so you see the trade nine gig you mean nine gig as opposed to 93. so you see the trade-off by having more more drives to to lessen the um how should I say, root tax of, of a partition per drive. A good now, in the it. case of what are we going to do with all those unused root partitions? They are, not, they are not really needed for expansion disks, absolutely. The only thing you could really expand with those things is the root aggregate. But ONTAP's going to set up the root aggregate to give it all the space that it needs. So if you want to do some housekeeping and you don't want to just have those stray, spare root partitions hanging out somewhere, you can add them to the root aggregate. That's fine, but you can't use them for data aggregates. Cannot. That's not a supported operation. Gotcha. So, I mean, it, they're, are, they're just sitting there indefinitely. I, I like the idea that we're spanning it out based on, I don't want to say spindle count because they're not spindles, but like drive count. We're, yes. we're, 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 so it's kind of a balancing act. Do you want... Do you want to use up as much space as possible in as few drives as possible, or do you want to spread the load across all of the drives that you have um, in that? It's, there's, there's a bit of a decision to make there. Um, ONTAP seems to lean on whatever you present it with initially. Is that a fair assessment? It, it absolutely is, because it says, oh, what do I have to work with? Eight drives? All right, I'll lay my groundwork with eight drives. Oh, I got 48? I'll do it this way. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, and a great question. We had it come up as well in another thing, and I know it's, oh, it's that always that comes up. It, it, we always talk about uh, about the root partition stuff. Um, it, it's it's always been a thing. It's there for a reason. Um, don't abuse it. Um, right. Don't try to shortcut it because it will come back to bite you. Um, it can. Yeah, and you know one of the dangers if you should try to like say, hey, I want to just muck around with these root partitions and do something with them just, you know, on, on a test basis. You know, if that's what your dig is, then, then by all means go for it, but don't make it a long-term solution because in case there is a drive that has a failed root partition, you don't want to be caught in a spares low uh, right. uh, situation where it doesn't have an available drive for it to rebuild. That's a good point. Yeah. All righty. So how do we close out here, Scott? Just oh, like that this. Was it. <laughs> Should we have any other questions, comments, or snide remarks my way? Um, I certainly do. I, I look at this as, so how does this scale differently between the 250, the 400, and the 800 and 900 platforms? How do you see this sort of thing um, affect those tiers of systems differently? 
from a partitioning scheme, it doesn't matter. It could be a 150, it could be a 900, doesn't matter. However, I uh, had this question come up just recently uh, from somebody who was reading the collateral uh, just last week. Thank you for doing that if you're watching. In that, um, what's my maximum? How many more of these can I have? And you know, the the answer is you know refer to Hardware Universe if you have access to it, because not because I want to deflect that, but the answer truly is in Hardware Universe. Let me give you an example. So like an A150 can support up to uh, actually let's 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 go back in time. Let's pick an on an A200. An A200 can uh, support up to 144 drives. Okay, but an A250 can only do up to 48. Okay, so the hmm. quantities are going to vary between the systems. And especially when you get into the, the large scale, like the uh, A900s, you know, you can do 480 total drives. But if you're mixing SAS and NVMe, only 240 of them can be NVMe attached just by virtue of how many you, how many the system can support. You Got say. It. Yep. So always, always, always check Hardware Universe. Hey, what's the supported maximum number of drives I can attach to this system? Oh, it happens to be 48. Well, then guess what? Once you hit 48, that's the maximum number of drives that can be partitioned on that system. Gotcha. Uh, question came in from Dennis. Uh, so this will work up to a maximum allowed disks per HA pair? That's exactly what I was just talking about, Dennis. Yes. Always refer to Hardware Universe to find out the maximum supported on that HA pair, and you're off to the races. Yeah, it's interesting to try to think about this conceptually when, because obviously I've got the the 250 back here. I deal with the the, the limitations of that sort of 48 drive count, but yes. I look at like what you could do with a 400 or an 800 or 900 like that. Now you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of drive counts. Yes. All of a sudden, I don't really care about that 48 9 gig partitions all of a sudden. Um, no, I, you don't. Because there's, there's that many drives there. But I'm also probably doing multiple aggregates across all of those. So uh, there's going to be multiple 48x uh, root partitions. So it's interesting how... I'd the, hope so the, anyway. Yeah, please, yes. <laughs> please don't do it all, all in one. But the, the, it's interesting to think about it differently at scale. Um, when you're sort of specking all this stuff out and when you're setting it up initially, I think I don't think enough planning goes into initializations and, and initial setups uh, these days. I think we sort of throw the systems out there and boot it up and let the systems just it's kind possible. Of do what they do. It's um, absolutely possible. I, uh, in my experience, you know, I have a lot of people from the field, uh, uh, solutions architects, partners reach out to me and say, hey, am I doing this right before I pull the trigger? Yeah. And, you know, it sometimes uh they're they're doing everything guilty. just fine <laughs> sometimes i have to talk them off the ledge yes i know you're guilty too nick yeah. but that's okay uh I, th I think i think mr bell here is probably my most talked to person on teams over the last 12 months uh so yeah, yeah. it's possible had a question come in uh, again from our good friend og1 said while we're here mm. what happened to raid ep slash zns stuff can you talk about that I'm not sure what he's referring to. We'll take it offline if you like. Okay. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Um, okay. Anybody else got any questions before we wrap up here? Just want to uh, give everybody a chance to weigh in. <clears throat> I, w I did want to ask, um, when can I expect my expansion shelf to show up for my 250? Oh, well. <laughs> that... <laughs> Yeah, Nick, I'm good. I'm not that good. Come on, buddy. Oh man. Well, you and Mr. Luth pulled off a miracle getting me uh getting me the gear and the stuff a couple years ago when uh when right. I first moved. So no, yeah, I, I, I would love to I would love to play with some of this stuff in an expansion scenario. Mm -hmm. And it just it makes it a little bit tricky um to try and try and do some of that. But I sure. am gonna kinda tear the whole thing down and I wanna start oh. with the the minimum, uh the eight mm -hmm. disc or the six disc kind of minimum and then plug the drives back in and watch what happens when I get it updated to 914. Um, well, so coming soon teaser for you guys that follow my data center dude channel, that's going to be a video I'm going to work on 
uh, L- little comment year. on that, if I may. Say you strip it down to the eight drives. Yep. Full support of that. Let let it do its thing. But you want to expand it. Remember, as soon as you plug in those drives, you enable the policy. It's going to automatically slice and dice those drives for you. So if you want to see what happens in a different scenario, then I recommend you create another RAID group hanging off your area of whole drives and then turn the policy on so that that way you can see before and after, you know, on one way or another. That gotcha. way you can get the full breadth. I know you're gotcha. limited to only 24 drives there, but that's going to be the simplest way for you to see what, what's happening, what's going on. But you said that wouldn't work, so we want to capture what it looks like when that fail, when that doesn't automatically do it Correct. when there's whole disks in the... In, okay. Correct. Got if, it. if you want to. I mean, you don't have to, but... No, if, I would, uh, it's, it feels like I need to do that first, otherwise it wouldn't work the same way. I'd, I'd have to go back and completely reinitialize everything. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Love the dialogue, and I love the questions that keep on coming in. What else you got? Uh, let's see. Let me do a little look around over here. Shout out to you guys on Twitch. I see you over there. Thank you for joining us. Everybody yes, on YouTube, you. LinkedIn, Discord. Got a bunch of people watching everywhere. So thank you guys for, for joining us. I hope this kind of content is useful for you and you guys like it. Much more coming. Uh, this is, Scott, this is your, you're our final episode of 2023 before we go into the holidays and the break. And uh, we're going to launch a whole new, I guess we'll call it a season two uh, going into 2024. Um, like so it. we'll have all kinds of new stuff to talk about uh, here on NetApp on air. But yeah, I, you're going to be, you and um, Keith Asin and just the regulars are going to stay and continue to be. I mean, I even broke out my Powered by OnTap shirt. Hi, Octavia. Nice. You'll, you'll like it. Um, the, I, I just, I want this to be a, the, a technical show and you always bring the technical, you always bring the geek man. And that's one of my favorite parts about having both Keith and yourself. Uh, we need to find a way to get Mr. Luth back on here. Um, at some point, I think oh, there's going to be out. a show next year that will be a big one, but we'll see when we get there. I don't think <laughs> we'll have any problems dragging him back on this show. No, we, we, uh, you talk about a man that loves to geek out about hardware. I love it. I love it. Uh, okay. Well, I think we'll wrap it up there. No new questions coming in. Scott, as always, thank you so much for, for always being a willing participant and, uh, and, and being a part of the show and taking us down some super deep technical rabbit holes. Um, anything you want to leave the people with any resources out there that they can, if they want to learn more about, uh, APS. You know, reach out to your uh, uh, friendly neighborhood SE or partner. You get get you access to the field portal resources because there's a lot of tidbits that I've included in the tech fact, especially and the ADP SE deck has also been updated. Um, thank you for attending. Uh, shout out to the NetApp A team, of course, <laughs> and uh, happy holidays to all of you. I hope you have a, a wonderful uh, end of the year. Scott, as always, thank you so much for being a part of us, uh, part of the show, part of hanging out in Discord, and just a part of the community in general. We really appreciate it. So I appreciate it. Happy thank holidays you so to much. you too, sir. Thanks, buddy. All righty. Well, there we go, guys. The final show of 2023 is in the books. Uh, it's been an amazing year. Uh, Drew and I started this back in January, um, talking about what we were doing with Discord. You can go all the way back and watch them on YouTube. Um, but what we were, our plans were for Discord, how things were, were setting up then, we would love to have you guys in there. Uh, it is very quickly becoming the hub of our wheel uh, on all things community. So we do still have the forums. We do still have all of that stuff over there, communities.netapp.com. You can find over there. But the real-time interaction is happening in Discord, and we're going to see more and more of that going into 2024. More episodes here on NetApp On Air are coming your way. Uh, keep an eye out in the in Discord is the best place to track that at the Events tab in the top left. Uh, you're going to see those start to fill out in the coming weeks and months uh, as we go into the year. So uh, make sure you join us here every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, right here on YouTube. You can also follow us over on Twitch if you prefer that platform. We do also stream it to LinkedIn if you like to watch on a social network there. Uh, and we do also uh, put it up in Discord as a watch party where you can just watch along there if you prefer. But if you want to get your comments on the show, you got to be on uh, either YouTube, Twitch, or LinkedIn so that we can pull them up on screen and you can see everything there. Thank you, everybody, for making this year awesome. I uh, just want to uh, just a couple of quick comments. Um, 2023 has been a, an amazing, tumultuous year of new experimentation, 
all of the stuff that we've done with Discord, with the live stream here, getting it up and running. Uh, we got back to Insight after four years. What an amazing journey this year has been. Um, and I'm looking forward to what we're planning to do next year because we're back. We're back. Everything kind of feels back to normal again after a long few years of kind of being upside down and on its head. So I really appreciate you guys hanging out in Discord with us. It makes all the difference in the world. Uh, people are noticing. And I will tell you this, that I saw a lot of startups at reInvent that are also advertising their Discords. So you're in a good place. Um, yes, if you joined us, you're going to be able to join other communities out there. And it's a great platform for that kind of stuff. Uh, Discord continues to innovate what they're doing, and we're going to take advantage of a lot of those things. You're going to see some new kinds of things with what we call stage channels, all kinds of sort of uh, panels and things like that that we're going to have throughout 2024. So thank you for an amazing 2023. I'm going to stop talking now. I'm going to let you guys go, but uh, happy holidays. I wish everybody the best. Happy New Year in advance, and we'll see you guys next year right here on NetApp on Air. Until then. Take care.